we're still pinching ourselves. We, you know, the success has been uh, pretty amazing. When I worked with the tile company, we would do a lot of architectural work, uh, churches, uh, donor recognition walls for big buildings and, and things like that. The general discussion was, uh, wouldn't it be nice if we had a shop where we could all be together? We really need to find property that Ron Logan can move the blacksmith shop up here because we're working with Omaha architects. We'd been trying to get him up here to Omaha um, since we all did so much work together and, and the studio he had in Lincoln was just a, a literally a, a small garage. I needed a bigger space and uh, a space where I could make large things. I had a nice foundry and there was a huge kiln in that studio which I used but I wanted to do more uh, uh, large scale uh, fabrication work too and it just simply wouldn't work in the space I had there. My partner in the tile business, he was here at one of their auctions to pick up some file cabinets. He had a daughter that was going off to college and there was some neat stuff and he bid on this pallet and got it, but he wasn't really paying attention. And as he's going up to pay for it, the gals are kind of laughing and, well, what's so funny? He says, and they say, well, you don't realize what you bought. And he says, yeah, I bought that pallet full of stuff over there. And the gal said, no, you weren't listening. We were watching. That pallet is representative of everything stored on the second floor in this building. That's what you bought. And it was a, a semi and a half load of used office furniture and cubicles. You know, and he calls me up and says, come on down and see what I got at the auction. And I said, gosh, this is great, but, you know, what are we going to do with it all? It ain't going to fit in a parking lot of our old studio. So we called the owners and told them that we bought this stuff at their auction and asked them if we could rent the space for a month until we figure out what. And they said, yeah, you can rent the space. Do you want to buy the building? Um, they were about to be foreclosed on. The building was cheap by today's standards. Uh, actually, it was cheap by those standards, too. What made sense for us was there was enough space for us, the four of us, to have our studios. And uh, we also knew there was a need for studio space. The building, uh, which was 92,000 square feet, it was way beyond anything we ever imagined uh, that we would ever use. So at that time, we began to reimagine again, well, you know, what can we do with all this space? And, and the idea was that, well, we could invite a lot of other artists in and, uh, and actually develop a uh, sort of a critical mass of artists, uh, something that had uh, really never been done in Omaha before. We had found this property and we knew we were going to go into debt. When we were trying to get our original loan, what we had to do is prove that we could rent the space we had and therefore make the payments. We talked about it and they let us in the building on a weekend and we roped off what we thought the studios were going to look like and what we thought the rents were going to be and invited a bunch of our friends and had pizza and beer and walked them through the building and told them about what we were thinking and had intent to lease forms in each space. Everybody was like, well, this is an idea, but I don't know if I can jump on board. I just said, we cannot hold your feet to the fire if you sign this paper. Fill it out. Take one of those papers and fill it out if you have any idea that you might do it because you're going to be the first ones that will get involved in the hot jobs. We're having pizza and I had grabbed a piece of pizza and left. I was frustrated that I had to go teach a class that night. and. Um, I didn't find out till a couple of days later that we had 25 or 30 people signed up. We had X number of people that we knew would probably support us, probably. 
and that's a big probably. We closed in November of 99 and moved artists in in uh, June of 2001. We put all of our energy into it. We put in a lot of sweat equity and we don't know if it's actually, if we just put in sweat or if we'll actually see the equity uh, out of it. A couple thousand for something, that was really a major expenditure. Now we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars and a tremendous amount of money and tremendous amount of responsibility that w was really beyond anything any of us had ever done before. And so it was pretty scary. You know? The original bank that we assumed the mortgage on, part of the deal was to, uh, they would cover 50% of the build out. And we didn't know what that number was going to be. See, we locked into this uh, six months before the city voted on to put the convention center where it is. The vote went positive, went okay for the uh, convention center, and we couldn't have afforded this property the next morning, you know, so luckily we had it. <laughs> As soon as they decided where to plant that convention center, all the land values started to increase. The initial bank we had, as soon as we started the construction, uh, they pulled the loan. So we had taken our business plan, shopped it around to a bunch of other banks. When they looked in their books to see what they could rent or what they could uh, lend money for, uh, there is no category that says art studios or art center or any of that, and so uh, automatically that made us a uh, bad risk loan. What saved us, though, was Ed the Glassblower was doing the Renaissance Festival that year over in Council Bluffs, and he had remembered that the king of the Renaissance Festival had come into his tent to warm himself that weekend before, because it was rainy and cold. I hollered, hey, your majesties, it's warm and dry in here. <laughs> so they made a beeline. So that's how I got to meet Tom. The King of the Renaissance Festival was also the owner of People's Bank in Council Bluffs. And Ed and Rosie had banked there for quite a while. And so Ed called Tom up and said, you know, we've got this project and we're having trouble finding financing. Can you come over and look at our business plan and tell us, you know, we were just asking for advice. Tom came over, we walked him through the project and we're halfway built out. We've still got steel studs and still pulling wire for electrical. And handed him the business plan and said, you know, Tom, if you can give us any advice on what we need in this, you know, to get the banks to play with us, we'd be grateful. You're going to have some turnover. It was just a general question. Well, you're going to have some turnover because they see it all the time. They're in business. Uh, I said yes. And... Uh, the people on the waiting list will hope we have turnover. He looked at me and said, you have a waiting list? We have never done a deal that was more than 70% full. I didn't tell him there were only five people on the waiting list. But <laughs> and it only took two days later and we got a letter back and we're reading the letter and it was an intent to loan. When we were talking to Tom of People's Bank, we were talking to the guy who was going to make the decision. And so, um, you know, that saved us. Otherwise, uh, we, we never would have survived that, uh, uh, that deal. To be an artist uh, involves a, a, I mean, you got to be a risk taker. And we took a big risk. I mean, we had our houses on the line as collateral. So if this project fell through, it was going to be start over. Uh, I hope we don't lose the house. <laughs> That's what the family says. We've been full 90% of the time that we've been open. We've got a waiting list currently of people that want to get in here. I think I accidentally wandered in here one day and I didn't know what it was. And then uh, maybe six or eight months later, they were having an open house. And I came to the open house and it was like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta get in here. It was a long, long waiting list to get in, uh, the building was full. Yeah, I drove them crazy coming down here every day, <laughs> trying to get in. But as soon as I walked in, I, I thought, oh, here's the vibe. It has the vibe, the, you know, the art spirits. 
are happy here. A lot of creaky floors, but I love that about it. Just kind of a buzz throughout the walls, you know, that uh, things were happening, uh, creative juices were flowing, and, uh, you know, just a, uh, I think creative people uh, put off a whole nother, a whole nother hormone that's not even named <laughs> because it's, it's contagious. I had a studio uh, for two years here. Um, my, uh, my previous husband, uh, his job relocated us from Dallas to Omaha. Um, rather suddenly and unceremoniously and so you know naturally we come up here and I'm complaining about everything and just to look around I walked in the building I, I got maybe as far as the front foyer and I meandered into the office and Tim Barry was sitting there and I said uh, how do I how do I become a part of this how do I get in I mean the only criteria to get in was pretty much the check had to clear we didn't really judge people's artwork um, we want it to be a place where they can come and see how good they can be. I've always been a person that uh, looks on things inclusively, not exclusively. You know, it's, uh, we had uh, a few renters that said, you're letting lesser artists in here, you should jury them. We haven't tried to go out and get this kind of artist or this special artist, you know. Um, we're really a, a reflection of the community. It's a wonderful place. Like I say, it's like a candy store to me. I come in the front door and I'm hit with all these colors and friendly people and I just want to make something. I don't know what else I would do. I, honestly, I love what I do. And I always say I've got the best job in the world and I've got the worst boss. She makes me go to work all the time. Now remember, I came in here complaining and bitching and moaning and, you know, I don't want to be here, blah, 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 the weather sucks, blah, 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 why do you eat so much bread, blah, blah, blah. Um, I discovered that if I shut my mouth and open my ears and eyes instead, this place, not just Hot Shops, but all of Omaha had a lot to offer. Almost everyone I've met here has been open to sharing and it was my understanding from uh, Ed and Tim when I first talked with them that that was the, the concept of the building was to make people aware of art and to share art and uh, hopefully uh, grow art in Omaha. Part of our goal here is to uh, engage the public and, uh, and make them more aware of what goes on in a creative community and, uh, and how they function. And so uh, most people, if you go to a gallery or you go to a store or something, and you buy an artwork or any other product, you, you really have no idea where it came from. If the public is just going to the high-end galleries and the museums, they're only seeing the finished work. If you've never felt the heat from the glass furnace or watched us uh, throw a pot, especially one of Dan's big pots, seen, seen what a bronze looks like when it first comes out of the shell, watched one of Dar's paintings evolve over a couple of weeks. No foundation to understand what the hell we're looking at when we're in the museum. Hot Shops gives us all the ability, the place, uh, the vehicle to share our passion. And um, passion sells. In the time we're given, we want to advocate for the arts. We want to advocate for other artists. Inspire them to work hard so that, you know, at the end of our time doing this, that others will will continue the pursuit of that that creativity and innovation and the 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 fine and wonderful crazy way that the arts can communicate ideas i love tim's comment we all know what we like but we only like what we know so education is a big portion of it so education for ourselves and education to give to other people and continue a place where people can find out how bloody good they can be. And goodness isn't necessarily just your work. It's encouraging others. It's teaching. There are so many teaching moments in life. Part of our thought process nowadays is how does the uh, hot shop sustain after uh, after we're no longer here and no longer 
running out or no longer have studios here. And so we're trying to figure that out. This thing we call life is a relay race. Um, and so we're looking how to pass that torch to the next generation. The three of us aren't going to timidly walk up to that young person and say, will you please take this? Our attitude is more, we're going to throw it at them and say, run, damn it, run. Um, but that's, you know, kind of the future for the hot shops is, is transition.